Hello! This is the one episode rule of podcast about first impressions. I am Magpie, still eating Baki Hanma, still being poisoned. <laughs> I'll I'll have to get I'll have to get into it in a minute. Um, how how are you? How are y'all? Um, I'm Blackhole. Um, I'm trying to remember what anime I've seen recently. I saw well, he finished Isaacin, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I saw anything else. I mean, I'm playing like my my girlfriend's roommate. We're getting her to play Psycholonials, which feels like an anime when it's mm-hmm. not. But uh, that's that's all for me, really. Mm-hmm. I haven't really been. God, I feel like I am forgetting something, but I can't remember what it is. Mm. Well, time's up. We'll never yeah. know. We'll never um, know. Hey there, it's me, Louie. Uh, I have watched so much anime, guys. Like, so much. Like, I've <laughs> been, like, it's all I've been doing the last couple of days because I've been fucking sick. Um, not all of it's been great. Like, I watched the rest of Mashal. That was good. Um, I, what Mine's else good. did I watch? I watched Tokyo Revengers, which was, like, okay, but, like, these people are not high schoolers. You mm-hmm. cannot tell me that this 30-year-old man is a high schooler. Ah, oh, Okiasa syndrome. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I watched Jobless Reincarnation, which oh boy. Yeah, you, you were going off about it. Let's. Uh, can you give us the sparks notes? <laughs> um, thirty-four-year-old uh, Shudden, who uh, like it, it, this series is what like creates the whole like bus like bus gun trope. Mm-hmm. Um, so like he gets hit by a bus saving a girl gets reincarnated as a baby into uh like your typical like magical isekai um mm-hmm. like it's very stereo like it, i say it's stereotypical but it's what created the stereotypes right so it's gonna be stereotypical but the main character is a fucking piece of work just a just a real degenerate like, yeah like he, uh, the th- and the thing is like his like there's two versions of him. There's like the MC version that died. Uh, that's the narrator and like the mm-hmm. voice in the head. And then there's like the character voice that, of how he actually sounds. So it's like you hear this grown ass man talking, thinking about how like this woman's like biddies are bopping. Mm-hmm. Um, and like he, then you just see baby hands like grabbing for them. And I'm just like, is this what Ugh. my future entails? <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> That's yeah. the that's the dark that's the dark version of Oshinoko. <laughs> but uh Yeah. Honestly, yeah. You guys do you guys wanna do you guys wanna hear about the what the fucked up shit what happened in Mbaki? Sure. Sure. Um because I watched another one and a half episodes and it every every one of them is worse than the last. <laughs> The way you say like one and a half episodes, it sounds like you're like dosing it out, like like pharmaceuticals. I'm micro. I'm fucking micro dosing. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm micro I, I, I macro dosed on thirty episodes of Jobless Reincarnation. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, let's see. He he continued imagining things so hard that other people could see them. He he fucking fought a human sized praying mantis. Nice. Under the <laughs> assumption that its strength would be proportional, and I'm just like, you, man, Itagaki did not past science class <laughs> a man-sized praying mantis's legs would be damn near hollow and i could crush them like a soda can um but uh but but it was it was it was thrilling like and yeah i watched like half an episode before i came in here which escalated matters by having baki travel to america to kidnap the president so that he could go to the same prison as a guy he wants to fight He's got to do it. <laughs> He's got to do it. And yeah, it's George Bush. <laughs> what? Which is really funny. Um, That's hilarious. So, uh, so yeah, it gets, it gets fucking weirder every time. And the thing is, is that, like, I've been looking pretty closely at it. And we've all, we've all like, remarked that Baki is hideous. Like, everyone in Baki mm-hmm. is awful. It's up for Baki, yeah. kind of. Because he's given a slightly more normal anime face. But I've been looking closely at it, and it, that doesn't mean that Itagaki is a bad artist. He's actually fucking great. Like, his command of, like, 
Kaigi Why? style, like make everyone look disgusting for some uh, reason. Type. His his command of like line of action and making characters look very solid is huge. Is, is great. He's super good at it, which makes everything very impactful. And all of his anatomy is actually correct. Those are all the individual muscles. They're just horribly distorted. <laughs> So he's choo he's a good artist who's choosing to do this. Yeah. It's it's stressful to consider. I just realized instead of saying I'm so tired y'all instead of saying ka kaji I ka kaiji I said kagi. Kagi. No, I think you said kaji. I'm so sorry. Did a kaiji. kaiji. Um I'm pretty sure you said kaiji. Let's get some news oh, out of the way. I'm so tired I thought I mispronounced kaiji. <laughs> Let's get some news out of the way. Speaking of speaking of news, uh, just a little complaint for me. Every day, every day I come in here and I fucking see Attack on Titan, Titan season Titan. four, part three, episode two release date, and I and I go, why the fuck is it? Why are you not dead? Why are you not dead? It's so close, and I'm so ready for it to be over. <laughs> anyway, uh, real news. Um, so yeah, we got some uh, we got some stuff we got some announcements. Uh, uh, hey, Netflix's One Piece got renewed. Nice. Yeah, it, That's apparently, surprising, but also uh, not. Apparently, it's good enough for a second season. <laughs> um, and not too good to cancel. Oda said something about Oda. Oda apparently said something about getting six seasons out of it, which I don't know. But he's I don't know. He's connected to it, so. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm curious how they'll adapt Chopper. Uh, I am terrified and delighted at the thought of them. Adapting. Also Frankie. Oh, no, not Frankie. Oh, you've ruined it for me. I don't want to see Frankie. <laughs> I want a freak. I want him to be equally proportionate. To you, want him to be, you want him to be an absolute fucking monster. <laughs> yes. Just, just an abomination. Um, uh, we're gonna do a bad news sandwich here because, uh, because yeah, uh, the fucking staff for Bleach uh, Thousand Year Blood War have expressed oh. concern over being harassed and threatened on Japanese Twitter. Is this about the Giselle thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think There's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. There was a slightly off-color scene from the manga that they chose to cut, uh, and oh. yeah, it caused it caused. Uh, it caused uh, manga fans to just act a fucking fool in a way that you would expect of English people, but no. <laughs> I did um, see that they were getting harassed, but um, I didn't know what the reason was. I'm just assuming. Yeah, it's something. It's a, it's something to do with uh, with uh, attire, some uh, boob trope with Orihime. Right. So. Uh, oh, I know what um, you're talking about. They can get over that. Yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> And apparently they've decided not to and decided to be shits about it. Whatever. Um, to the point where it's apparently notable. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, and finally, uh, I, I guess I guess I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to go back to the old me because, and I shit you not about this title. Uh, now that uh, FLCO Grunge is over, uh, they have announced uh, soon we will have FLCL shoegaze. <laughs> Spell that for me. Shoegaze. Yeah, like the genre of music. Oh, okay. I heard shoe. No, I heard something else. Never mind. Fucking FLCL shoegaze. shogun it. <laughs> FLCL. <laughs> FLCL sludge core. Um, <laughs> sludge core. Uh, anyway, whatever uh, that whatever music you get when you slow down Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, what were they calling that? That what I think that was Sludgecore. I think that's what they oh, okay. he was calling it. But um, but uh, yeah, you guys want to hear what we're watching? Um, yeah, only if it makes me happy. I'm just picking something out of the viewer suggestions, and I've just because uh, we're all we're all tired, and nobody trusts anyone. Um, hey, I bring good things to the show. Um, I'm just so kidding. yeah, we're gonna watch Land of the Lustrous. I fucking knew it. You I fucking said knew lust, and I got happen. so scared. <laughs> Oh,
Beware Steven Universe. You knew it. We I knew are it. the Crystal <laughs> Gems. Yeah, yeah. I was like, there's um, no way we can't not make a Steven Universe reference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a lot taller and balder and more of a monk Where's than I remember. Steven. Um, Where's Steven? Um, so, so yeah. Uh, who wants to read uh, this blurb? I'm too tired. I'm, I refuse. It's Louis. Louis wants to read this. I'm the one that has the sore throat. <laughs> Whatever. In the we mysterious future. Throat. I'm reading the blurb here. <laughs> operating, operating space. Anyway. In the mysterious future, crystalline organisms called gems inhabit a world that has been destroyed by six meteors. Each gem is assigned a role in order to fight against the Lunarians, a species who attacks them in order to shatter their bodies and use them as decorations. Okay. It's fucked up. Uh, Phosphophyllite. Phosphophyllite, also known as Phos, is a young and fragile gem who dreams of helping their friends in the war effort. Instead, they are told to compile an encyclopedia because of their delicate condition. After begrudgingly embarking on this task, Foss meets Cinnabar, an, intel- an intelligent gem who has been relegated to patrolling the isolated island at night because of the corrosive poison their body creates. After seeing how unhappy Cinnabar is, Foss decides to t- find a role that both the rejected gems can enjoy. So, uh, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> phos- uh, phosphophyllite. What a name. Um... Uh, yeah, the the show pays like more attention to like the actual physical properties of these uh these crystals than Steven Universe ever did. Um, yeah, I gotta say though, hardness is like I don't know. I don't know if hardness is the right measure for how strong a gem will be. Because for how like means that well, like if something is hard, it can still brittle. Brittle. It can still be quite brittle, but I, yeah. I think they're talking about like sheer strength. They're talking about things that are like specific to crystal structures. So, so uh, they're probably taking brittleness into account. I think that's, I think the most scale takes brittleness into account. Yeah. Which but is then why diamond then, sits at the top. Yeah. But that's not like, that, that's not, you know, I'm not going to fact check this show. It doesn't need it. <laughs> it, it. Yeah. It doesn't need it. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, we open on uh, we open on two gems, uh, pink and yellow ones. Uh, I don't know their names yet. I don't think they were actually named in this show, yeah. this uh, episode. But they are out in the fields, and uh, we should note uh, before we go on: this is an entirely three D anime. Mm. Seems like, um, which is uh, which is interesting because I feel like if your three D is competent, like if you have good modeling, and they do, yeah. Um, they have a very good, nice like, shading and shaders and stuff like that. Yeah, they have a they have a nice like cell shade shading style going on. Um, then I think what makes or breaks it is cinematography, and this does re- really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're out. Uh, uh, most of the areas they seem to interact with are just grassy fields. Um, uh-huh. <clears throat> they're out looking for foss. Uh, because uh, Master Congo, uh, I think a human. <laughs> I think he's a human. Um, he is the only. He is the only different one. Um, yeah. Is apparently looking for Foss, uh, and she is out uh, sleeping in a field. It seems like, uh, and she pops up over the grass and says, "Oh, what? Really?" <laughs> it's just like, yeah. It's just like, well, you don't think you don't think. I'm going to be allowed to fight. And there's like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, also, we saw some, uh, uh, we saw some sunspot activity. So we have to go and, and check it out. And it's like, well, it was just a small one. Why don't we just take care of it ourselves? Um, and uh, Foss <clears throat> goes back to, uh, is this like a temple? I guess. Yeah. It's a complex it where they like all it. live. Yeah. It, it has temple aesthetics. It's, it's got a big, it's got a big bell. <laughs> um, the dinner bell. What do you think these, but, uh, these people don't eat, I bet? No. Nah. I don't know, because because they talk about having biological process. But, um, their, but their biology is clearly very different. Um, yeah. 
I kind of like how they haven't answered everything yet. Uh, Silicate based beings. Um, but, uh, oh gosh. uh, but yeah, uh, Foss, uh, I, I don't know why I thought this. I'd seen some clips before. I thought Foss was going to be a, uh, a Kuderi, an emotionalist protagonist. She's not. She's delightful. She's yeah. stupid. I like, the, uh, <laughs> I like the characterization in this. Everyone's like, uh, <laughs> she, she's, she, she's, she's just the kind of dumbass that I love. Um, mm mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, she she's like gotta make a good impression. Gotta gotta be cute. Gotta be dignified. <laughs> Fucking um, like trying to part and move her like her like stone hair, hair around. Well, the hair does move, so probably That's combing true. it a different way can probably happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I had to guess, I had I would imagine it's like extremely thin extruded crystal, but um, yeah. But it shouldn't be flexible. Whatever. We're not fact checking this show. No. <laughs> Doesn't need it. Um, but yeah, she goes in to meet uh, Master Congo, who appears to be a very tall uh, uh, Japanese monk. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you denomination, but he's dressed in very traditional attire. Um, uh, who has summoned her because he has finally figured out a job for her. Uh, but, uh, she does interrupt, she does interrupt, uh, we, we cut away from this, uh, to, uh, the two from before, uh, and the sunspot activity. So what they mean by sunspot activity is, um, a cloud full of beautiful, beautiful Buddhist gods are coming to kill them. <laughs> yeah. The, the Lunarians are incredible looking. Yeah. <laughs> they appear to be made out of light. I think, um, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, not only uh, they they have not arrived as like a monster or or something. They appear to be having a great time. There's like drummers and people throwing flowers, <laughs> and about a yeah. hundred archers on this cloud. Yeah, they're, uh, having, they're having a good time with it. Uh, and yeah, they just uh, they see the the gems and immediately <laughs> go, "All right, time to fire." <laughs> Um, let's get them and, and we cut back to the meeting between Foss and Master Congo because she mentions it's just like oh uh, while uh, while we were there uh, those two said that they saw some uh, saw some sunspot active and he just leaves hmm. <laughs> um, and our next scene is is him striding at the head of like a, do- a dozen of them uh, and Foss explaining to her the deal because he's just like it's just like I never knew what to do with you because you are too fragile. You are a you are a three a uh, three and a half <laughs> on the hardness scale. Uh, just bumping into someone would be enough to shatter you. So we, I, I obviously couldn't put you to work, but I finally dis- decided what to do. <laughs> and uh, just as he's getting to that, uh, he finds that yeah, the Lunarians have won. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't mention that they did cut the the tallest one's head in half, and it just extruded some arrows made out of a different gem. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of body horror going on here. Yeah, a lot of, like, if you think about it, body horror. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they won, and they're just picking up pieces of the other two who are uh, just torsos right now. Yeah. Uh, and they're delighted with what they've got. <laughs> They're 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 clearly they're clearly uh, really unconcerned with any danger involved in this. Uh, you're just here to have a good time. They're here to have a good time and collect pretty uh, pretty rocks. <clears throat> um, until Master Congo uh, uh, raises his voice <laughs> because he says he says it's far too soon for this, uh, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, his voice is uh, his voice is strong enough to he's he shouted the main character apart with his voice. Yeah. <laughs> Just explodes like, like the thum. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, she just shatters, <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, that's kind of my point. <laughs> we can't really put you up to anything. Um, 
Uh, so they have to put her in a body bag. And- yeah, they have to put her, they, they they collect all the pieces of them uh, that they can find. I don't know whether they killed the Lunarians or just banished them. It's mysterious. Uh, I wonder if he disintegrated them. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, as she's being put in a body bag. And also, they're completely conscious and don't appear to feel pain. While smashed it's, apart like this, don't think about it too long. Which is a little, which is a little spooky. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, he explains to her, it's just like I've decided to have you compile an encyclopedia for us, and she's like, "Fucking what?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, no, it's important. <laughs> That's <laughs> you need boring. To, you need to inc- <laughs> you, you need to record our past and present so that we can pre- be prepared for the future. And then she just he just zips her up. She's like, I know you're trying to trick me into doing this. <laughs> uh, our next scene that we go to is them put it, being put back together, right? Um, I believe so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rutile, uh, who I remember because she wears a lab coat and has multiple different colors, and I remember what Rutile is. Um, mm. uh, it's putting the scouts back together. Uh, and apparently what the deal is is that... Uh, is that their biology is such that if you get the pieces back, you could you could uh, put them back together, no matter what state they're in, uh, which ma- kind of makes them incapable of like letting go of anything. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. And they even mentioned that they have a basket of uh, of uh, heliotrope shards, and they're just like, if we got enough back of her, we could put her back together. I'm just like, oh, that's fucked up. Would she not be permanently insane after that? <laughs> Um, but, uh, but during this, we, we, uh, realize that Foss is not really suited to the job of creating an encyclopedia. Foss doesn't appear to know what an encyclopedia is. Uh It's the thing that lets you, uh, record all the Pokemon. Um, and after a lot of hemming and hawing about it, uh, and, uh, even, uh, trying to snatch one of the swords off the other girls um, whenever they jokingly offer it uh, and almost being shattered by it. Uh, her notepad uh, stops the point of the blade from hitting her skull and cracking her. Mm-hmm. Um, she finally resolves to uh, to become the master scholar. <laughs> yeah, there's like a funny moment where they call her master scholar and she's like, oh, that's me. She's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, that sounds nice, actually. Maybe I like that, but um, <laughs> but yeah, she talks to everybody trying to figure stuff out, and we find out something interesting. We find out that the gems don't really fucking know anything. <laughs> yeah. They know like their immediate job, and most of them watch the sky obsessively. <laughs> uh, but uh, outside of that, they don't have that much like. Like Rutile knows a little about like adhesives and putting people back together, but other than that, they but they all suggest that uh, that uh, she go talk to Cinnabar, the Night Watchman, um, because Cinnabar is bound to have uh, bound to know things that the rest of them don't, because uh, she's the only one who can walk at night, because the rest of them need sunlight uh, to pass through them. Uh, I thought that was interesting. It seems to be the root of their consciousness. Um, yeah. So I imagine they all just sleep as soon as it gets dark. Um, except for Cinnabar, who is uh, constantly <laughs> seeping uh, mercury, because that's where mercury comes from. <laughs> and that's the reason why that's the reason why in the Roman Empire, if you committed a crime, there was a good chance they would shove you into a Cinnabar mine to die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, she emits uh, just floating gobs of mercury, uh, which uh, collect the what little light there is at night and allow her to to walk. Uh, and uh, talking to her is not at the top of Foss's list because everybody appears to be afraid of her. <laughs> but the only other option is talking to Master Congo, and that's just going to lead to a day long lecture. Uh, so she does resolve to go looking for her, uh, and uh, interesting. And uh, first, first she goes to her room because she's she's decided she's going to make her help her. <laughs> she's going to enlist her as an impre- as an apprentice. Um, mm-hmm. 
and she goes to her room and there's nobody there. There's just Merc- there's just some Mercury. Uh, she's like, and her neighbor is just like, she doesn't come back anymore. <laughs> she, she's always gone. So, uh, uh, undeterred, she goes out looking for her and spends all day killing up and down the coast uh, until the late evening where she's uh, um, she's on she's uh, on a cliffside. She's like, well, shit, I guess I have to go go back. Oh, shit! Gods from the sky. <laughs> They're here to take because, yeah, another Another hunting party is here. Uh, they do not appear to be led by a t- titanic Buddhist saint this time. So it appears to be a smaller party. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she almost get, catches a bunch of arrows, but, uh, she is, she is suddenly saved by a woman wielding a giant cloud of poison. <laughs> <laughs> um, this scene is really cool, actually. She's I got like, this scene is really good, and I was gonna be like, yep. Well, maybe a little, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Cinnabar just has straight up superpowers in comparison to the rest of them because yeah, she could just wield clouds of uh, liquid metal. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and like she take, take the shape of like people running and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like like she goes, she does the full like Lord of the Rings like Arwen shit. <laughs> like she, she's got a she's got an army of horseback riders because she hates fighting so fucking much. She is so mad. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, they, they dispatch most of the, uh, most of the Lunarians. The the Lunarians come out poorly in this one. Uh, Uh, a fate, uh, possibly worse than, uh, being disintegrated by a monk. Uh, Uh but, uh, but in the process, uh, she finds herself well out over the cliff's edge and she goes to, to, uh, to grab the edge and it's, well, it's it's covered in liquid mercury. (laughs) Uh, so she's clearly going to fall into the sea uh, until Foss uh, sacrifice, like, like sacrifices her own safety to put out uh, her hand and notebook for Cinnabar to grab. It was mentioned earlier that if she touched any of this poison, then it would contaminate her crystal structure, and they would have to chip away those places. And, and she'd also, what memories were stored there? If you forget the memories that were stored in that, very strange creatures. Yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of impressed intriguing. by the world building, honestly. Um, uh, but yeah, and, it, and she yanks her arms clean off. <laughs> yeah, pop right off, like Barbie dolls. Uh, and she thinks she lost her, but apparently uh, Cinnabar uh, made it behind her and says, I never asked for you to help me. <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, the next scene is them be is oh yeah, and she she fully uh, she she reaches out to pick up uh, Foss and fully loses an arm because yeah, Cinnabar is less hard than Foss uh, Phosphalite. Um, it's like a, a two on the Mo's hardness scale, um, uh-huh. which is why it's never been used in jewelry or anything. <laughs> uh, I forget what the Romans were using it for actually. Maybe maybe been, been dyes used it or for paint. a dye, I think. Yeah, like yeah dyes of paint or something. Uh, it would make an extremely red dye, but uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, and as soon as she's put back together, uh, the next day she's just out there again, and she's picking up turnips and shit and looking at them and just be like, just like, can I write about this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and and we get some backstory that. Nobody knows what to do with Cinnabar. Cinnabar leaks poison at all fucking times, which is why she's on the Night Watch. <laughs> they, they can't do anything with her. They pushed her out there. Uh, and uh, she discovers Foss at the same place, and she's just like, you again? Why are you out here? <laughs> she's just like, well, I have to find something. And she's like, why are you out here anyway? This is the most dangerous place on the island. That's where we lost Heliotrope. She's like, I know. That's why I'm here. My life is miserable. <laughs> and I'm waiting for them to take me away. Because at least maybe they would get some use out of me on the moon. <laughs> uh, and Foss is uh, fucked up by this. 
Yeah. Uh, and and leaves her notebook behind, which is discovered later. But uh, she spends the, basically the rest of the episode uh, just uh, lying there with her head in her arms, <laughs> saying like, "Fucking idiot! Why would you? Why would you be like that? Don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Tudabar dis discovers the uh, notebook and uh, goes to bring it back. Uh, and isn't that basically the end of the episode? It ends on a little bit of a downer. Yeah. Yeah, she like, I, I thought, I thought it ended kind decides, of funny. Decides. Yeah, she Foss just, decides that they're gonna try to find a job for. She's gonna find something for her to fucking do that isn't so goddamn miserable. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> that isn't so um, awful. It's actually yeah, a got, pretty touching character drama. Yeah. yeah I think I like the characters. I yeah. like the art style. Um, I feel like this um, honestly would have like benefited from a dub, honestly, because there was a couple moments where the subs were covering parts of the frame, which were like... That could have been cool yeah, to see. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like uh, there was a shot where like they were all sort of like focused on the bottom of the screen. And then the subs mm. just covered all the characters up. Yeah. Um, so I'd curi I'm curious to see if the dub's any good. Um, um. But I will say this is what you see when you make four Shan crystals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, also these characters have like a one kilometer wide thigh gap. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're they're all they're all like rail thin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they they all dress like uh, they all dress like the android made from uh, Big O. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah, uh, they're all like in the same outfit and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a uniform. Um, yeah. But uh, um, but yeah, uh, the my for for my part, uh, I think the three D is done pretty well. Uh, this one was uh, pretty er pretty early for all three D anime. Uh, it yeah. stands out as like a good example of it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think this was I think this was airing against fucking Berserk 2016. Mm -hmm. And that's really fucking stark <laughs> right there. I remember uh, Berserk 2016. Um uh and I have to say it, it, overall it's just very beautiful and uh the characters are well written and the voice acting is great. Uh, so uh yeah, I think I think I would watch more of this. See where it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this could be a good uh, watch with girlfriend anime. Mm hmm. I, I believe she suggested it. I so. believe your girlfriend suggested it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been a while since she watched it, apparently. I don't know. Maybe it's the mood I was in. Like, I liked everything that I saw. Like, I liked the characters. I liked the world building they established. I liked the 3D. I liked, like, once I saw that the characters were color coded, I was like, okay, I can dig this. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's just something about like the, there's no i guess maybe it's because the character of Foss doesn't really have any agency until like the very end where she determines like what she's going to do mm -hmm. um but i was just like where is this going the entire time mm -hmm. but i now but that being said i would watch more yeah yeah so that's a that's a three that's a three out of three for the crystal gems <laughs> yeah Steven. um yeah I think so yeah yeah, I don't think this is a watch on my own type anime. Yeah, definitely. I I definitely want. Well, I wouldn't watch this with Blackle's girlfriend, but I'd watch it with people. <laughs> Why not? Because, not like her? No, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. everybody wants to do with Blackle's great, girlfriend. <laughs> a, okay, I'm, anything I say now is just going to be. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> if you if you'd like to tell us about your gem OC. You can do that at one episode cast at gmail.com. And if you'd and if you'd like to tell us about what anime you want to watch with my girlfriend, <laughs> uh message us at the one episode or one episode cast on Twitter and Blue Sky. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. also one the word, not the number. Do your girlfriend seen monster? I'll show anybody monster. That show's know. fucking crazy. I say. <laughs> Let's all watch. She monster describes herself as an entry. She describes herself as an entry level weeb, so like maybe not. <laughs> Monster's yeah. kind of obscure. <laughs> just yeah, like maybe. just like how do, <laughs> coming coming through the window. <laughs> do you want to watch a show about a bunch of scary Czechoslovakians? <laughs> <laughs>
There's a couple of Germans too. <laughs> Please say yes.